me tender, love me true, never let me go. Love me tender, love me sweet, all my dreams fulfill. For my darling, I love you, and I always will. You're watching Old Crow's Classic Cars on Unbox TV. COVID really changed things and impacted things in many ways. Um, from uh, working with cars, it's there's a lot that's involved, a lot of different aspects and materials involved in fixing a car. So there's steel, there's a, a plumbing, there's rubber, there's hoses, there's electrical, uh, oil, uh, different fluids, uh, junkyard batteries. There's a lot involved. And with the COVID uh, lockdown, it just removed all of that. So uh, even something simple like uh, engine oil, you couldn't just uh, go into to a you know a hardware store or uh, you know an auto supply and just buy it because obviously it was locked down. So it's a matter of going on the internet and ordering it and trying to find the right one or calling and then arranging a time to pick up. So it really made things a lot slower and less efficient. Um, and of course, the fact that people just had other priorities and worried were worried about um, saving money rather than spending money on a, on a hobby or a project car that's gonna sit in the garage. So unlike me, I actually, I actually drive my car every day, but the vast majority of people that have that own classic cars, they're interested in, um, they're, they're just keeping it in the garage. Gas tank made out of propane tanks. Is that what it is? Yeah. I had six propane tanks. What do you have mine gave them to me and I, I, I just had nothing to do with them. Wow. So I guess it all started with my first car, which is behind me, my Rambler American. Um, at first, I just wanted a car that I could drive and I wanted something that was uh, very simple to fix. I, from experience, I've just seen, seen a lot of people having to spend hundreds, maybe often thousands of dollars on repairs. And I, I, I did see how cars just became so much more complicated. So initially all it needed was an alternator. And then I started working on other things and doing some upgrades and a few other issues came up. And then I, I, I got into buying more tools, more equipment. And I also realized that it was, it's cheaper and, and often easier to just fix something yourself rather than pay somebody to do it. You know what sheet screws are? But these are fully threaded bolts. So basically they they have like let's say 30 threads that the bolt actually holds on to. So the threads go all the way from the top through the bottom. Whereas here it's just maybe two threads. What's the story? So it's actually inspired uh, by a, a true event. So when I first started working with cars um, I actually had a, had a pet crow, so it was just a, a baby crow that fell off the nest, and um, so I, I took it in, took care of it, it, it grew and it stayed around. Uh, so while I was working on cars outside, the crow would always be flying around. Uh, while I was working, you know, pulling, a, pulling an alternator off, the crow would be on my shoulder, and old crow's classic car. So I also worked on a few uh, Thunderbirds. Uh, I actually enjoyed working on the Thunderbird, especially because of the song. There's a Beach Boys song called Fun, Fun, Fun. 
uh, about the Thunderbird, the T-Bird. She pretty? 61 Ford Thunderbird. Got her daddy's car and she cruised through the hamburger stand now. She forgot all about the library like she told her man now. Really when the car disease took over, <laughs> took over my brain really. The radio blast and goes a cruising just as fast as she can now. Um, they're very fun. It's it's a whole different car than my Rambler. It's a it's got a big V8. It's got got a bunch of fancy um, commodities: power steering, power brakes, um, power windows, uh, power seats. Um, so they're, they're fun cars, they're fun cars to drive, cool cars to work on, um, but my, I think for me one of the nicest cars I ever worked on was a 1927 Ford Model A, and again, I'm my obsession is with reliability and simplicity. Cars from the 20s and 30s era, they're one of the simplest cars you could, anyone could ever work on, it's, uh, they're just big giant heavy duty lawnmower uh, with wheels on it you're driving a lawnmower nobody takes a lawnmower to the dealership so a lot of these terminals they come from the factory uh, they're made of lead and lead is soft and lead is more reactive so there is corrosion for lead and you'll see all that white stuff but with the brass you can see the terminals are, are all nice and clean and I've also added a uh, stainless uh, wing nut here. Again, all, all parts where it's extremely important to uh, remove. Uh, the two batteries are a bit of um, what we call overkill in terms of reliability. So they just give me, they just give you a lot of, um, a lot of starting power basically and reserve time for for uh, an audio system for example so I'm sure everybody has heard of somebody else that maybe that's happened to you once or twice where the person is listening to the uh, going out camping they're listening to the, they have the radio on listening to music and somebody forgets the radio on and then the next day when everybody's packed up and ready to go home the car doesn't start I also had a 1947 DeSoto that I worked on um, Worked on a few Mustangs, I worked on a few modern cars too. Also worked on a few trucks, and my most recent project is the 1986 International. It's a big nine ton truck, um, rated for about 15 tons. That's a new one. <laughs> Another car, second car that I'd love to have would be a Firebird. Uh, from 1965, anywhere between 65 and 75. It's a whole new, it's a different car. It's a fast, uh, very sporty car. Um, and yeah, that would be for sure a Firebird and uh, Model A. 
instead of, if I were to just use regular steel bolts, uh, in a matter of a few days, may, a few weeks, maybe even a few days, they would already get rust, and, uh, and, that, and rust really impacts um, electrical conductivity. So it would actually, in this case, it could actually possibly cause me to lose the overdrive if this wire is not uh, electrically conductive. And the same for the battery terminals. I mean, if you look here, I've replaced all the battery terminals with, except for one, with uh, brass fittings. And I've already seen a lot of people, a lot of cars, where people got stranded and they called the tow truck and it, because they had a bad terminal connection at the battery. So it might seem simple, but like I, I often say, sometimes a bolt or a nut is all it takes to get you stranded. So on this relay here, as you can see, I have this uh, nice looking uh, brass uh, nut here. And originally it would have been, it, this part came with this nut here that's on the side. And again, for electrical connections, uh, I think it's a common knowledge, it's common knowledge out of copper. And the reason they're made out of copper, for example, is because copper is conductive and it's very resistant to uh, corrosion. So for electrical parts, I always like to use either brass, which again is a very good conductive of electricity, <laughs> and it's immune to rust. We bought a big piece of land and that will probably be my next major goal uh, project for myself. But who knows, in terms of cars, vehicles, who knows what the next project is. Um, you never know what the future is. Could be, personally, I'd like, I'd like it to be a car from the 20s or 30s, like a, another Ford Model A would be nice. What's the dream car to acquire and I kind of have two major dream cars, but if I had to pick one, it would be probably 1925 to 1935 Ford Model A.